Mother of the Fog, Creature of the Wilds, and the Messenger are just a few of the names given to the entity, the mythical spirit worshipped by the Children of Atom. The Children of Atom say the ghostly figure came to them in their hour of need, after they were banished by the people of Far Harbor, who were certain the noxious fog that slowly enveloped their island was the result of their religion and so they were left to fend for themselves, on an island that was anything but safe. But to their fortune, a saintly woman came from the fog and guided them to their new home in the Nucleus, a pre-war naval facility with its very own Nucleus submarine. It wasn't long before the ghostly figure was incorporated into the children's religion as Mother of the Fog, a spirit that once guided them to safety and now reappears to those worthy of witnessing her presence during holy visions. But as to what people see during these visions can differ greatly depending on who you ask. Some describe the messenger as a faceless figure, dressed in tatters, and most would agree with this description, but also say she's glowing and oozing fog. But not all children agree. Few believe the spirit is nothing more than a simple hermit, a helpful recluse that doesn't like to be seen. These visions are received in one of two ways, yet there's no guarantee that the messenger will even appear, but the first way is to commit oneself to a holy fast, eating nothing and drinking only irradiated water, and the other way, which appears to be reserved for newcomers trying to join the children, is to drink from the sacred spring. Once you have consumed some of the water, one of three things will happen. Either you receive no vision at all, or the messenger appears and guides you to Atom's shrine, where your mind is either broken by the radiation, or you survive and go on to join the children, which is apparently quite rare, at least according to Grand Zealot Richter. It's worth mentioning that on this pilgrimage to the shrine, certain creatures have taken on the same dark glow as the messenger, and they don't attack, which is unusual but not unheard of. As for the shrine, it's a fairly small building surrounded by radioactive barrels and feral ghouls, who I believe have been chosen not to worship Atom or spread word of his religion, but to endlessly guard the shrine from the unworthy. Inside we see several things, specific markings, bottles of glowing liquid, candle stands made from empty fusion cores, and in the corner, a small cage that's locked only accessible through a security door which requires a code, which I will come back to later. Through the security door is a desk and a small wooden figure, the mother icon, an item needed by those trying to join the children of Atom as proof that their holy lord has deemed them worthy. The mother icon is a very important item to the children as it represents Mother of the Fog, and as far as we know, only two of them exist, the one inside Atom Shrine and the other inside the Pump Control, atop a different shrine to the same deity. This place was used by a man named Martin, the previous confessor, who through a series of unfortunate events came to be replaced by Tectus, the current confessor, but that's a story for another time. For now, we know Mother of the Fog is real. We saw her firsthand. Yes, it was during a state of hallucination, but we were taken to a specific place we had no idea existed. Was it pure luck we happened to stumble upon the item needed to join the children, or were we guided by the messenger? I find it highly unlikely that we found the shrine by ourselves. so the only thing we have to ask is how real is the messenger? Is she truly a saint of Atom sent to guide us, or a helpful hermit, as some of the children suspect? In truth, I think she's a bit of both. Slightly east of Haddock Cove is a ruined house which may belong to the hermit. Inside are markings and candles that look very familiar, and on the table are several notes that we can read. The first is titled, A Stranger Arrives. It reads, To Atom's Island, a stranger arrives, a new child we spy, referencing either the sole survivor or Kasumi Nakano's arrival on the island. The second is titled, The Children Trapped. It reads, The Children Trapped, in a crumbling home, 
Mother wants to end their pain, referencing Far Harbor and her desire to rehome the children, which sounds an awful lot like Mother of the Fog leading the children to their new home at the Nucleus. The third is titled A Vengeful Creature. It reads, A vengeful creature drives the good confessor away, and to question his purpose, referencing Confessor Martin, which again is a story for another time. The fourth and final note is titled A Safer Way. It reads, From Atom we find a safer way to watch. Gifts never cease. Referencing the many stealth boys the Hermit has acquired, devices that allow her to take on a strange appearance which many could mistake for a foggy veil. The author of these notes clearly worships Atom. She calls the island Atom's Island. She has scouted for new members, she has watched the good confessor question his faith, and she believes the stealth boys which allow her to watch over the children without interfering are gifts from Atom. But these gifts can be addictive, and extensive use can destroy the mind, and over time, being seen by others can be painful for the afflicted. You only have to look towards the Nightkin to see how much harm stealth boys can truly do. If that wasn't enough to convince you that Mother of the Fog is a hermit, albeit one that worships Atom and is addicted to stealth boys, then maybe this next part will be. Back at Atom Shrine are three more notes that we can find, although one is outside on the road. The first is titled Note from Atom Shrine. It reads, To this shrine retreat, upon Atom think, know his servant's watch, referencing the shrine, Atom, and his servant, Mother of the Fog. The second is titled Scrawled Note. It reads, For Atom enter shrine, with Atom decipher name, from Atom claim entry, referencing the code on the periodic table, which is a combination of three radioactive elements. The third and final note is titled The Sacred Elements. It reads, The Sacred Elements Guide to Atom's Holy Word. His table leads within. Again, referencing the periodic table and the radioactive elements that spell the word Mother. Now, all notes I've mentioned thus far have been written in the same way, with three lines of text, a strange assortment of lower and uppercase letters, similar to the elements on the periodic table, and each between three to six words long. Writing styles are unique. We all do it differently, and for both sets of notes to be written in the same manner, by two different people, is more than a mere coincidence. It suggests that all seven notes were written by the same person. A person who I believe is addicted to stealth boy technology, and inside the shrine where Mother of the Fog guides new children, Behind the locked door, which cannot be opened without a code, is a stealth boy, a backup, for if she runs out while away from her ruined home, and I'm sure other stashes exist for that very reason. Now, let's say the Hermit is Mother of the Fog, then who exactly is the Hermit? Well, I believe the Hermit is a woman named Esther, and the reason for that is because of the door code in Atom's Shrine. We are led to believe the correct code is 999068, or mother. But if we take those numbers and spell out the word using the periodic table, it doesn't spell mother, but Esther, a name meaning to hide, or star, depending on where you look. If we treat mother and Esther as their own individual words, we now have a new 12-digit code, 429068, 999068, or Mother Esther. And I don't know if all passwords happen to be 12 digits long or not, but the password to the cage is. This woman, Mother Esther, is somehow immune to radiation, much like the children of Atom. And in the beginning, before the children came to the island, Esther was living here, hiding from others who must have thought her a witch for being able to survive the fog. Perhaps they hunted her, and stealth boys were the only thing that made her feel safe. So she frequently used them, which eventually led to her addiction. But one day, the children arrived, and they were just like her. And so when they needed help, after they were shunned by Far Harbor, Esther gave it to them, guided them to the Nucleus, an irradiated naval base that would keep them safe from the others. 
but she didn't join them because much like the Nightkin, who understand her addiction, don't want to be looked at. From outside, Esther continues to help the children, testing newcomers to see if they're worthy and gifting them an icon if they are. And this would explain why not all people drinking from the Sacred Spring receive visions. It's because Esther is elsewhere at that time, watching others and taking notes. She isn't capable of being in two places at once and simply wasn't watching, wasn't there to guide them to Atom's shrine. And this brings us back to Mother of the Fog's ability to pacify many of the island's creatures, which may seem unbelievable, but we must remember that psychers do exist. People with powers over rad roaches, mole rats and dogs, so why not rad stags, gulpers and fog crawlers too? For all we know, this ability could have been what forced Esther into the fog in the first place, away from people who didn't understand her powers. And this also explains how the Hermit has been able to survive near Haddock Cove, a settlement overrun by Myalurks that have seemingly left the ruined house alone. It could be because Esther has control over them, or perhaps Atom is real and is controlling the irradiated creatures instead, keeping his servant safe. One last thing I must mention is Mother of the Fog can actually be spawned in using console commands. And well, she's human. If my theory is correct, then this is the face of Mother Esther, an individual chosen by Atom to help the children, but cannot be seen by them due to her stealth boy addiction, which Atom feeds, but it does look like Esther may be trying to overcome her demons by allowing a mannequin, which is at least human in appearance, with piercing eyes, I might add, to look at her until she can normalize the sense of being seen, after which she could go on to join the children at the Nucleus, perhaps even lead them. Until then, she will continue to guide the children from the foggy shadows, which only serves to fuel their belief in Mother of the Fog. His kingdom consumes Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you as always for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.